Hello there, you are welcome to the Warring Women of God channel. This is Adiola Ogedengbe here. We want to continue to talk about the gift of the Holy Spirit and we are encouraging you to stir it up. Now let's talk about the, the gift of the different kinds of tongues. The gift of the different kinds of tongues is the divine spiritual language uttered by human vessel through the power of the Holy Spirit. You can read about this in Isaiah chapter 28 verse 11, Acts of the Apostle chapter 2 verse 4, and 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 10. You can also read more about it from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 to 3, and chapter 14 verse 2 see the manifestation of these gifts in Acts chapter 2. The people spoke in languages that they were not familiar with. It was only those that were gifted in the interpretation of tongues that could understand. The Bible records three types of tongues. The first one is an un unknown tongue. This is recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2. We are told that this edifies the people and aids us in praying in the Spirit, worshipping in the Spirit. Then again, it also aids the flow of prophetic ministry. We can read about this from 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 5 and also verse 15. These acts confuse every contrary spirit and break their yokes on God's people. Acts chapter 2 verse 6 and 1 Corinthians chapter 14 tell us about a known tongue that gives a sign to unbelievers. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 15 tells us about the tongue that can be understood by the interpretation which edifies the church. The gift of interpretation of tongues operates directly from the Spirit of God. It is the supernatural enablement to interpret the gift of different kinds of tongues spoken out of the mind of the Spirit. It gives clarity to the meaning of a tongue spoken under the option of the Holy Spirit. The person operating this gift can only interpret by the Spirit, as he or she does not have a natural understanding of what she is interpreting or what he is interpreting. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 13 says that the person speaking in tongues should pray for the ability to interpret what he or she is saying. Then 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 27 encourages two or three people to take tongues to interpret. In other words, everything must be done in order. Sometimes the interpretation of the tongue spoken can be as lengthy as the tongue spoken, but the interpretation of the tongue spoken does not necessarily have to be as lengthy as the tongue spoken. The Bible scholars broke down these nine gifts of the Spirit into three categories. They are number one, revelatory gifts. These include word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirit. Then number two, power gifts. This include faith, healing, miracles. Number three, inspirational gifts. These are prophecy, diverse tongues, interpretation of tongues. Now with the revelatory gifts, the Holy Spirit gives supernatural insight into something that you could not have known naturally through these gifts. The word of wisdom operates by the Holy Spirit giving you a direction or an understanding of what to do in a given situation. We can see the operation of this gift in the Old Testament through Elijah. Um, let's read 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8 to 22. Then the word of the Lord came to him, that is Elijah, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. 
see, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake for me first, and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The bean of the flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The bean of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord which is spoke by Elijah. Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick, and his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. So she said to Elijah, What have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? And he said to her, Give me your son. So he took him out of her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his own bed. Then he cried out to the Lord and said, O oh Lord my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow with whom I lodged by killing her son? And he stretched himself out on the child three times and cried out to the Lord and said, O oh Lord my God, I pray let this child's soul come back to him. Then the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child came back to him and he revived. From this scripture, we can see that in verse 9, the widow did not know how to meet the need of Elijah. But in verse 13 and in verse 14, by the word of the Lord, the word of wisdom, Elijah told the widow exactly what to do to make this happen, and they were all provided for. By the word of wisdom coming forth from Elijah, the need for food was provided. Now let's look at the New Testament. In the New Testament, we saw Jesus constantly operating this gift through the Holy Spirit. How he handled the case of the woman caught in the adultery in John chapter 8 is clearly by the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom has a way of building on the word of knowledge. Now let's look at the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge. With the word of knowledge, the Holy Spirit knows everything. He is omniscient. A word of knowledge is a tiny portion of God's knowledge, supernaturally imparted by the Holy Spirit to a person. It is divine information imparted by God for a specific time and purpose. Information given through the word of knowledge comes supernaturally through the Holy Spirit and not from the mental or emotional mind. In the Old Testament, we see Samuel manifesting these gifts in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verses 1 to 27 when the Holy Spirit told him where the ass of Saul was. In the New Testament, by the word of knowledge, the Holy Spirit revealed to Jesus the relationships that the woman at the well of Samaria has had in her life. You can read about this in John chapter 4, verse 16 to 19. Now let's talk about discernment of the Spirit. The difference between discernment of the spirit and the word of knowledge is the discernment of the spirit is limited to supernatural information
information of the spirit world. This gift helps us to know the kind of spirit operating through a human being or even an animal. In the Old Testament, the eyes of Elijah's servant was opened to see what was happening around him by the gift of discernment of the spirit. He saw garrison of angels surrounding himself and his master. Then he realized that those that were with them were far more than the enemies surrounding them. You can read about this in 2 Kings chapter 6 verses 13 to 18. Then in the New Testament, Paul was able to discern through the spirit that the girl that was following them and saying good things about them was actually speaking from demonic spirits. You can read about this in Acts chapter 16 verses 1 to 24. The difference between the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge is word of wisdom is directed. It gives direction to the person that the word is spoken over. In Proverbs chapter 15 verse 2, the Bible says the tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly. Therefore, wisdom points or directs to knowledge and it uses that knowledge accurately. A word of wisdom is only a little portion of God's wisdom given at a specific time for a specific situation. The Holy Spirit divinely moves upon people or in situations to bring about His desires and purposes. In the Old Testament, in 1 Kings chapter 3 verses 16 to 28, we see Solomon manifesting this gift in the matter brought to him by two harlots. Paul accurately uses the word of wisdom in the New Testament, which brought confusion in the midst of the Sadducees and the Pharisees who wanted him dead. The Holy Spirit's inspired word of wisdom spared the life of Paul and opened the way for him to fulfill the last phase of assignment of God in his life, which is ministering to the kings. You can read about this in Acts chapter 3 verse 6. Now, let's talk about the power gift. All the power gifts enable things that look impossible naturally to be done supernaturally. When Jesus was on earth, he manifested power gifts by healing many people. You see a lot of people being healed supernaturally in Matthew chapter 8 verses 14 to 17, Matthew chapter 15 verses 29 to 31, and so many others. We also see Peter and John use the gifts of healing, the gift of faith, and working of miracles at the gate to the temple. You can read this in Acts chapter 3 verses 1 to 9. We see working of miracles in action when the supernatural intervention of the Holy Spirit power changes or alter natural circumstances. A good example of this in the Old Testament is when the Israelites crossed the Red Sea in Exodus chapter 14. Also when Joshua commanded the sun to stand still in Joshua chapter 10. In the New Testament, Jesus fed 5,000 people, excluding women and children, and also walked on water. The supernatural power of the Holy Spirit comes upon a believer and elevates him or her to a sight of the power of God, and he or she steps into it, releasing utterances in sync with the power of the Holy Spirit at work at that moment in time. This enables people to receive whatever is needed from God. Acts chapter 3 verses 12 to 16 is a perfect example of the manifestation of the power gift through Peter and John. Peter gave a deep insight of how the gift of faith works in verse 16. And in the Old Testament, we see the gift of faith manifesting through Daniel. In Daniel chapter 6 verses 16 to 23, Daniel was cast into the lion's den. He was not worried because 
the gift of faith empowered him to withstand the situation and supernatural things happened. The lion's mouth was stopped. These gifts enable us to step into the realm of the supernatural utterance. They make use of our vocal cords and our tongues. Gift of prophecy enables us to hear God and declare what God is saying. Prophecy edifies, comforts, exalts. It builds up the people. The rema of God in a particular situation can be regarded as prophecy. God can give a scripture as prophecy for you or for someone else. Prophecy is hearing what God is saying at any particular time and declaring or proclaiming it and also obey. Obedience is very important. Prophecy can come even in singing, when we are hearing and singing what the Holy Spirit leads us to sing, when the anointing of God comes upon us. David did this several times spontaneously. Psalm 110 is a good example. The gift of different kinds of tongues is when the Holy Spirit gives us the supernatural ability to speak in new tongues that we have not learned naturally. It could be tongues of another nation or even tongues of angels. Speaking in tongues is one of the promises of Jesus to us who believe in him. In Mark chapter 16 verse 17. We see the manifestation of this in Acts chapter 2 verses 3 to 11 and Acts chapter 10 verses 44 to 48. Also Acts chapter 19 verses 1 to 10. Speaking in other tongues helps our prayer life. Paul encouraged the believers in Christ to speak in tongues as he also did. Praying with our understanding means praying in a known tongue or speaking in a clear language. Praying with the Holy Spirit means praying in tongues unknown to us but given by the Holy Spirit. The scripture encourages us to do both in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verses 13 to 15. Praying with the Holy Spirit helps us to pray when we do not know how to approach a prayer point or when we do not even have a clear understanding on the issue we are praying about. As we pray in the Spirit, our spirit is communicating with the Spirit of God. Then the Holy Spirit, who knows everything, can pray through us in tongues more accurately. You can read about this in Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 28. Praying in the Holy Spirit also builds us up spiritually. To build ourselves up spiritually, we need to spend more time praying in the Holy Spirit. Jude verse 20, 21 talks about this. When we pray in tongues, we can ask God to give us the interpretation of the tongue. When we interpret our tongues, we are speaking the mind of God. This is also prophecy. We receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Every believer in Jesus Christ has a right to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The starting point is to earnestly desire the gift. This is what 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 31 says. Secondly, you can get a mature believer to lay hands on you, praying for you and imparting in you the gift of the Spirit you desire. Then you stir up the gift yourself. This is what Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 14. Do not neglect the gift that is inside of you. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 6 to 7, Paul told Timothy to stir up the gift of God that is inside of him. This message is not only for Timothy, it is also for you and I. We are to stir it up. How do we stir up the gift of the Holy Spirit? By constantly worshipping and praying. For you to flow in the gift of the Holy Spirit, you have to earnestly desire them and express that desire, express that desire in 
fervent prayer to God. Then by faith, step into, the, into worship and thanksgiving with the belief that you are receiving. As you feel a stirring in your spirit, launch out in faith and let the gift flow through you. I'm certain that if you can take this step of faith, you will flow in the measure of this gift of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Thank you for listening.